Hello, hello! Welcome back to another episode! We're up to episode 4. Are we actually? Hold on, let me check that. Yes, 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 yes. We are up to episode 4. <laughs> 4 is my lucky number. Let's smash out this video. We're gonna do some eyebrow wigglies. Today we'll cover opening your model file again. Uh, we'll go over which parameters to use, as well as organizational tips, such as your warps. We'll then go on to adding your meshes and your path deformer. We'll work on eyebrow Y, eyebrow form. We'll reflect the brow over by copy and pasting. And then after that, we'll just have a look at our physics and scene blending settings. We'll also be able to play some scenes to test out the brows. So let's go, let's get into it. Step one is opening our model file. First up, we're going to open our file. So you can either select open and open your CMO3 file, but I'm just going to open recent file. That is all open. I'm going to find my browse folder. And we're going to start rigging the eyebrows. So I'm just going to hide the hair. And now we're going to zoom zoom in on the eyebrows. Now let's sort out our parameters. So my eyebrow folder looks like this. I am only going to be using these four default parameters because these are the only ones that are trackable by VTube Studio, which is the tracking program that I'm going to be using. The brow X and brow angle are parameters that will not be tracked by VTube Studio. The brow angle and brow X parameters would be useful for uh, animation, I guess, but I will not be using them. So you can just add them to a misc folder down here, or you could delete them. So we're going to focus on these brow parameters that will actually be able to be tracked. Organizing the brows. You can see here that I've created a warp deformer for each eyebrow. This just helps with organization. So to do that, you would simply select on your eyebrow, so that's this one, and you would go up here and type in eyebrow and then select OK. But I've already got one, so I'm just going to delete that. If you do have the free version, I'd recommend not doing this. It's simply for organizational purposes. So we're just going to be working on this eyebrow and then we're going to copy and paste it over here to this eyebrow. So let's get started. Adding mesh and path deformers. We're going to start by creating meshes and our path deformers. So what you can do is select on the object itself. You can go up here. Some people like to just go auto mesh, go heavy deformation just like that. But what I like to do is make it more precise, kind of like how we did the eyelashes and eyeliner, because it will help you get more detail in the angles. So let's just go up to a manual mesh edit button, or we can go control E. And let's zoom out. And go erase. If your eraser is too big or small, you can use B and drag it left or right to increase or decrease the size. So let's just erase those points. And we're going to outline it manually. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but for some fluid movement, we're just going to uh, roughly outline it. And now you can draw a line down the middle. And let's go auto connect up here. What you can also do is go for division and add more points. And then use the check mark up here. Great, so that's all meshed up. <laughs> so let's go up here to the path deformer tool. We're going to add a few points. You can drag them around. And that looks about right. So let's select this arrow tool. Let's get on to eyebrow Y. What we're going to work on now is the brow L Y. So that's for this eyebrow. We're going to have some keyframes on it. So let's do that now. We're going to add three keyframes using this button up here. So we've got three keyforms now. So for eyebrows, when you drag it down to negative one, it's going to be dragged down and it's going to be the opposite for positive one. So when it's positive one, you can drag it up. 
what I like to do is every now and then I like to reveal my hair again just to see um, if it looks weird. So I've just revealed the hair again. You can press H to hide all the points. I think it could go a little bit lower. And that's pretty much what Y does. Just goes up and down. Alright, so that's already done. Look how easy that was. So I'm going to hide the hair again. Okay, hair is all hidden. Next up on the menu is eyebrow form. We're now going to go on to the corresponding brow form. So that is the brow L form. And we're going to add some keyframes. Press H so that you don't hide it anymore. This is where we want a wiggly worm effect. Now what you can do is you can either do it manually or you can synthesize the corners like we did with the eye. So I'm just going to show how I approach the eyebrows. If you mess up, you can go here and reset to default values. And that is going to be our default state for zero on brow L, Y and brow L form. For our default state, when we increase the brow L form on our default height, so our default Y, we're going to want to turn the eyebrow upwards, so you can grab one of these points, hold shift, and drag it up. Let's add a little bit more. And now let's go to negative one, and it's going to bend the opposite direction. So at this point you would go here and you could synthesize the corners. And that would work on all of the keyforms. But I'm just going to undo that. You can also put brow form on a separate warp. But I'm going to do it this way because I like it to be slightly different at each keyform. This method is also good for those who are using the free version. So I'm just going to do it manually. So let's go up. And brow form. One is going to be tilted upwards. This also gives you more control for what your brows will look like at each brow Y height. And now let's go down. And we want it to be slightly wiggly downwards. The beauty of this is that you can have as much movement as you want. You can edit the points here as well. Okay, now let's go to the lower. And let's go to positive one. And now let's go to negative one on brow form. And let's tilt it down. So this one's going to be the very angry or a sad one. You can press this X here if the box around it is getting in the way.
Now what you can do, after you have edited them on each point for more control, you can link them and see how they look. And you have your wiggly eyebrow. So voila, we're basically done with our rigging, so we can unlink them now. Whoop whoop, let's copy and paste that eye. Let's just select the eyebrow and the warp on top of it. We're gonna go Control C, or you can go Edit Copy, and then Edit Paste. But we're gonna go Control C and Control V. And after you've done that, just like we did with the eye, you can right click on it, and you can go Reflect. You don't need to do these, just select OK. And voila! Bam bam boom boom, we have two eyebrows! I'm just going to select X. Oh, and if you do want that box back, you can just select away and then go back onto it and the red box appears again. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide the new eyebrow that I just copy and pasted over. I'm going to take a snapshot. Great, and that's done. And now I'm going to show the new eye again. I'm going to click on this button here. And that allows you to see a before and after to see if the eyebrow is in the right place. It looks like it is. So I'm going to delete the old eyebrow. Let's just cut that because we don't need that anymore. And we have our two fully rigged eyebrows. I'm just going to rename this one. So you can select up here and change the arrow. And now for the parameters, you're going to need to separate it from this eye because this parameter is meant to be just for this eye. So you want this to move independently. So let's just select on it, select on the parameter and then right click, change. And you're going to scroll down to brow R Y. Here we go. And click OK. So now it's just moved onto brow R Y. Let's do the same for brow form. Click on it. Right click change. Find brow R form. OK. And there we have it. Now for a final discussion with our physics and scene blending settings. So we're going to do an important step. We're going to go control S and save. Otherwise you can go up here and go save. Let's just make sure that when you go to modeling and go to parameter and then go down to settings for eye blinking and lip sync. You want to make sure that your IL and IR open are working on eye blinking so they're ticked. I've also got my mouth form and mouth open ticked on the lip sync for later on. You can go OK. Now let's go modeling, open physics scene blending settings and let's test out our eye so we can see that it's already automatically blinking. Let's test out our eyebrows. So I'm going to go to random B and you can see that they're starting to wiggle like little, little caterpillars. <laughs> I can already see here that um, the brow might overlap the eye a little bit too much, particularly when this eye is open. Later on, you can just go back and edit. So I'll probably refine it a bit, fine tune. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Our eyebrows are working. You can also go to random A. <laughs> and random pose. But yeah, we're all done. I hope that tutorial was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Our next video will be about our mouth rigging. I always find the mouth really exciting to rig, so I hope you enjoy that one, so stay tuned. I really appreciate you guys. If you have any questions or recommendations or tips, feel free to comment them down below. As always, thank you for watching, I appreciate you so much, bye bye!